Listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Hey guys, Mike here from Mike's Bags, and today we're gonna to talk about practice. And I know, nobody likes to talk about practice, right? Practice is no fun, it's, it's more fun to play games, to compete against people, but if you really wanna get better, you need to spend time practicing. And so I've got a few ideas on ways to make practicing more fun, more entertaining, so that you wanna go out and practice, and some different ways that other than just throwing bags, you know, some ways to kind of spice things up a little bit. So let's jump into it. The first thing that I, that I do, or I like to do, is, is I just call throw them all. I'll grab four, five, six sets of bags, set up some boards, and just start throwing them. I'm not always worried about putting them in the hole. You know, sometimes I wanna set up situational, sometimes I don't, but you know, there are different ways to do it. And one way I do it is I do try to put bags in the hole, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll have five sets, 20 bags, I'll do five rounds, 100 bags total, and I'll keep track of how many bags I put in the hole, right? And I just wanna see, you know, am I putting 30 in, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever, and then kind of keep track of that and see as I go along, am I getting better, am I getting worse, right? And the other thing is, is I've got different style bags. I'll have some slow bags, I'll have some USB bags, I'll have some fast bags out there. And, and what that does is it forces you while you're throwing them to change your throw style. You know, you gotta throw a little harder for the slow bags, a little softer for the faster bags. And, and, and that simulates, it sometimes in a game, weather conditions change and the boards may get slower or faster and you can't change your bag, so you've gotta change your throw style. And so by throwing different bags in there, it mixes things up and forces you to really think about what your throw, what your throw is and what you're gonna do, how you're gonna throw it to get that bag in the hole or put it where you want to. The other thing I like to do is situational, um, um, setups like I, like I call it and, and so I, I like to practice throwing blocks is the first thing I want to do and, and, and I'm gonna take one moment here interrupt this to talk about blocks and, and what I mean by levels of blocks this is not something I came up with this is actually the, the first time I heard of this I don't know if he came up with it or not is from Anthony Ione ACL Pro out of Colorado I believe I think he works now for the ACL he does some commentating for them on some of their live feeds and streams uh, he also has a YouTube channel called Cornhole Science, I believe. I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. He doesn't do reviews, but he's got some really good information on how-tos of the game. Um, a lot of great videos. I, I highly recommend checking them out. But but he came up with a thing that, or at least he was the first one that I heard about, what, called Levels of Blocks. And what it is, is on a board, between the hole and the bottom of the board, you can put basically six bags will fit in there. Each bag is a level. So you have level one at the top, level two, level three, all the way down to level six. And so when I say it's a level one block, level two block, level three block, that's what I'm talking about is where it is in relation to the, to the hole. And I like to practice throwing. You know, get used to throwing a level one block, a level two, a level three. I don't really recommend going below three because levels four, five, and six are almost misses because once you get down there, you're not really impeding your opponent's path and you're, they're almost impossible to collect for most of us. I mean, only the elite of the elite can really collect like a level five, level four blocker. Even level threes are pretty tough for most of us to collect. But I like to practice throwing those blockers. Uh, and so what I'll do is when I'm throwing them all, is I may pull up a, a bag and say, I'm gonna throw a block here, I'm gonna throw a level one block, I throw it, and now I'm gonna take another bag and say, okay, now I'm gonna see if I can get around that bag. I wanna see if I can throw a cut shot or a roll or I'm gonna airmail over it. And then I'm gonna pull that another bag and say, let me see if I can collect that bag. And so when I'm playing situational, I'm not always trying to put every bag in the hole. Sometimes I'm trying to put them on the board. The other thing I do is, is when I throw a blocker, I wanna throw a back block, a block behind it sometimes. That's one of the hardest things to do is throw a back blocker in cornhole because no one ever practices it, right? So you wanna practice throwing the blockers. If you're struggling to throw blockers early on, it's okay to go up and set a blocker on the board so you can practice getting around it. But after a while, I want you to get good at throwing those blocks yourself and putting not only the board, but, but putting them in the lane you want them to, whether it's your lane, your opponent's lane, the middle of the board, pick a spot and say, I wanna throw this block and I wanna put it here and see if you can put it there. And if you can't, throw, throw, throw all 20 bags or whatever you've got there until you can get that blocker where you want to. Get good at throwing the blockers because that's gonna actually improve your game against your opponent. If you can throw a blocker and then you can collect it later. Uh, the, the other thing I can, the other thing I do is, is I use a trainer board. As you can see in the video here, the trainer board is, it's the same length, it's just a skinny board. They just kind of cut the sides off. And basically it's designed to help you put bags in the hole. The idea is if the bag goes off the trainer board, it's not gonna go in the hole anyway, it was a bad throw. And so it, it penalizes you for missed throws. You're not having bags hanging off the side. You're only getting points for the bags you're putting on the board, which are either collectible or in the hole. Um, there are different type of trainer boards. They're, they're, they're different prices. Are they worth it? I, I may talk about it later in, in a future video, uh, but if you have access to one or you want, you have the, the resources to get one, it will help you improve your game uh, as far as putting bags in the hole, right? Uh, the other thing I, I did, I don't have a video of this, but I will sometimes take two sets of bags and I will play me versus me. And I will alternate shots, one bag, the other bag, as if I'm playing an opponent. I don't always switch sides, I'll stay on the same side. 
But what I'll do is I'll say, you know what, maybe the one bag, the red bag, I'm going to throw conservative, the purple bag, I'm going to throw aggressive. And what I mean by aggressive and conservative is on the aggressive side, I'm going to go after every bag. If there's a bag hanging on the hole, I'm going to airmail to collect it. If there's a bag that's off the side, but maybe collectible, I'm going to try to collect it. On the conservative side, I'm just trying to put bags in the hole or on the board. I'm not going to collect anything unless it's right in my way and I have to go through it. I'm not going to go for air mail or any air mail drags. I'm going to play it safe. And, and I like to play that way with different style bags. Let us see, because you may find it. You know what? I play better with carpet bags if I'm aggressive, but I play better with faster bags if I'm conservative. Or vice versa. You, by changing that up, you, you'll see how you play with different style bags and realize what situation works best for you. You know, aggressive play style may not be the, the, the best way for you across all types of bags and all situations, but in certain situations, it may be. So practice that and you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised what you find out. The other thing I do is I will play ghost games. And what a ghost game is, is you're playing a game against a ghost opponent and you're gonna assign the opponent a score that they're gonna get every round. So if you do say ghost eight, which is what I'm doing here, your opponent's gonna get eight points every time they throw. And so if I throw a seven, the opponent gets one point. If I throw a 12, I get four points. And you keep track, you run through the scores and keep track until the game goes to 21 and you win or lose, right? Um, there's a way to, side note here, um, I use an app called Scoreholio. Some of you, a lot of you may be familiar with it. It's, a, it's an app that a lot of, a lot of uh, the cornhole world uses. Um, but it, it has a, it's a free app and you have, so there, are, there are some paid sides of it. On the free side, you have access to what we call free play and it's just a scoreboard, right? And it will keep track. And I would just say, you know, you can assign yourself on one and the ghost on the other, and you can just keep track. You know, I got two points this round, the ghost got one. You know, I got three more, the ghost got two, or whatever, and keep adding up. And, and it's just, you don't have to keep it up in your head. You can put this on your, on your phone, tablet, whatever, and keep track of it. Now, there is a paid version. Um, and on the paid version, and I think it's like 10 bucks a year. You can go 99 cents a month or 10 bucks a year. It, it doesn't cost much at all. I think of it as that, that 10 bucks a year is just a, is just a way to encourage Scoreholio to keep updating their app. I love it so much. Um, but they have what they call a practice scoreboard. Uh, practice. And a practice scoreboard. And then at the bottom here, do, 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 it'll give you an option for if you're playing head to head. So you want to play against somebody, you can set it up that way. Uh, but they have a ghost option. And you'll go in, you'll select what you're playing, ghost eight, ghost five, whatever you're doing. But the thing is you can select what bag you're throwing. So on this, I think I threw the swag bag rubies. So I'll put the rubies in there and then you'll start. And then you have a scoreboard here. The difference here is when I click to add my score, it wants to know what I did. Did I put, what, what did I score? Let's say I scored a six. Now it wants to know, was it a six with two bags in the hole and two off the board or a six, one bag in the hole and three on the board. And when you do that, so now I scored a six, so the ghost got two, so the ghost eight, right? But what it's doing is it's keeping track of where your bags are, and it gives you a it gives you stats as you accumulate of you know how many your percentage of four baggers you throw each game, how many bags you throw in the hole, your percentage of bags in the hole, percentage of bags on the board, percentage of bags off the board. It keeps track of all that, and it keeps track of what bag you're throwing and how you, your stats on that bag as well. So you can kind of go back and look at those stats and see, you know what, I'm actually throwing better with the slower bag. I thought I played better with the faster bag, but the slower bag is better for me or whatever. So the school holy app is great for, for, for keeping track of scores and, and keeping track of the stats if you want to do that. Um, I, also when I'm playing ghost a lot of times, I'll do the same things that with the, the you versus you is I'll play conservative one time, play aggressive one time with different bags, mix it up and see how I go, see how I'm playing, maybe see which way I'm playing better. Um, I also like to kind of challenge myself in the sense that I'll, I'll pick a ghost score I know I can beat. If I beat it, I go up the next one. So let's say I start at ghost four, I beat ghost four, I go to ghost five. I beat ghost five, I go to ghost six. If I lose to ghost six, I go back to ghost five. And I, and I either go up or down, and I win or lose, and I keep going and see how far I can get. And then you'll get to a point where you're up and down, up and down, and you know, okay, here's where I, here's where my skill level is. It's I'm at ghost nine, here's my skill level, or I'm at ghost five, here's my skill level. So now you know where you need to be and where you need to play more of your ghost games at until you get better at it, right? Um, the other thing I like to do is called a deck around, and all that is is 10 rounds, four bags. You pick one set, you throw 10 rounds of four bags each, and you keep your, you just keep running score of what you're doing um, and so this the scoring you know you throw three bags in one off that's nine points and you run it up 10 rounds you get a possible 120 total points um, if you throw a 120 you're doing awesome I've never done that but you keep track of your score and the deck around and, and and then you can kind of build on that you know what and, and again use different type of bags and see how you play maybe you throw faster bags but in slower bags or vice versa and that's where the the score holio app if you have the paid side it's going to keep track of the stats and keep track of your scores so you can look back and see oh man this is you know i i threw a ruby and i throw a 
I average uh, 8.5, but when I throw a, a Neptune, I average uh, a 6.3. You know, I'm doing better with the faster bags and just playing a cleaner style game or, or, or vice versa, you know, right? The other thing about deck arounds is a really, a, a deck around takes about, I mean, it takes about six, seven, eight minutes depending on how fast you go, you know, in less than 10 minutes you can throw one. So it doesn't, you don't need to have hours out there to practice, right? You can do one in just a few minutes if that's all you have, go out and throw around put the boards up and come back later. You don't have to constantly play a lot. Um, the other thing you can do for the ghost and the deck arounds, you wanna increase level of difficulty and you have that trainer board, put the trainer board out there. That really ups the level of difficulty and forces you to be even better. Um, and then the fourth kind of last thing I wanna throw out there is virtual leagues. There are virtual leagues out there you can play in. Um, I, I'm, I'm playing a few, I'm in one right now, in the middle of one right now on Facebook. And what we do, we have, we have a, a, a private Facebook group and when you go throw your round, we play against one opponent each week. And at any time during the week, I have seven days to, to, to put my rounds out there. I have to go live. I can't record a video and then put an upload. I have to go live so that way everybody can watch. And I go live, I actually, we actually do three rounds of, of 10, three games of 10 rounds each, right? So you're, you're going game one, game two, game three, and you get, you get points if you know your opponent does the same and your game one versus their game one, your game two versus theirs and so forth. And you get points for wins, points for ties, nothing for a loss. And then you, 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 you're going the bracket standings of how many points you got, but you can also do wins, losses, however you want to do it. But it's fun to play with people who maybe have different schedules than you or who live across the country and you can't see, you can do a virtual and you can go live and, and everybody can compete that way. It's kind of a fun way. It also adds a level of, uh, a little bit more pressure, a level of difficulty to your game because when you're playing against yourself, it's easy to go, ah, oh, it was a bad game. But when you're doing it virtually and you're going live and you're, everybody's watching, you don't want that bad round. So you put a little more pressure on you to, to post a good score, right? So all of these ways or, or all of these things are ways that you can kind of change practice up. You don't have to do the same thing every time. If there's something you really like doing, you can do more of it. You know, all of them are good ways to help improve your game. They all have got benefits. I use them all depending on what time I got and how I feel, you know, and, and if I've got someone with me or not. Sometimes if my son's out there with me, we'll do the throw them all. We'll just put, you know, 20 bags on the board and we'll just grab bags and throw them against each other. And we're not really keeping score. We're just setting situations up and then saying, okay, here's a blocker. Let's see who can get around it or whatever, stuff like that. It's just, it's just fun ways to to, to, to amp up the practice so you want to go out and do it more because if you want to get better you've got to throw bags right you've got to put the time in you can't just go compete in leagues compete in games and get better you be, and, and the reason I said it is, is you can get better playing games the problem is there are some situations games that you may only you may only come up once in a game or once in every two or three games and so if you don't see it very often you don't know how to handle it but if you set it up in practice I can set that same situation up 20, 30, 40, 100 times in practice until I can master it so that when it comes in the game, I know how to handle that situation, right? I know, you know what, when that blocker's there, I'm better at throwing a cut right to left than I am left to right, or I'm better off at airmailing it in that situation, or you know what, I'm better off throwing a back blocker because I'm, I'm, I do better with this style of bag playing conservative than I do aggressive or whatever it is. You've been through that situation in practice, so it's not a surprise in the game and you know how to handle that. Um, so I hope this video helps you if you have some questions or maybe there's some routines you do in practice that I haven't talked about, comment below. I'd love to know what you guys are doing to improve your game. I've also got some videos coming up that I want to talk about like shot, different shot types, how to throw cuts, different cuts, different ways, flops, rolls, stuff like that. Um, I also want to talk about you know some game strategies like like what situations, what do you do in this situation, what are you do in that situation, what's the best way to handle it. So I, there's a, a couple of videos I got coming up in this kind of series, but if you've got some other ideas, post them down below. If you've got any questions about anything, reach out to me, you know, comment any of my videos, send me an email, hit me up on one of my social media accounts, however you want to do it. I, I, I try to answer every question I can get the best I can. I, I love getting feedback from you guys. If, if there's, you know, I don't mind the criticism. So if there's something you don't like I'm doing, reach out to me or something you don't agree with, let me know. If there's something you do like, or if there's something you want me to talk about that I haven't talked about, Send me that. Send me, you know, send me a, a, a email or a message or a comment so I know, and I'll do what I can. If it's if I think I can put the video out or I think if I can add value to it, I will. I will bring it out to you. So I appreciate all you guys watching my videos. I appreciate all of you who, who have subscribed. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, I would I would beg you to hit the subscribe button for me. It really helps my channel out if you do subscribe, and that way you don't miss any of my videos. Um, again, the likes, the reactions also help a lot as well. But thank you so much, guys, for your support. I want to continue to put these videos out, and I look forward to bringing the next one to you. Thanks for watching. Listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice.